Well howdy and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the bike that you see right behind me. It's actually a giant ATX. It's going to be a project that I'm working on and slowly restoring. I wanted to talk about it today because well everybody's kind of like shut down and watching and attending YouTube videos so why not just post a project series and that's what this is going to be today. If you want to hear more about how I'm going to build a really budget friendly mountain bike out of something that I got for pennies on the dollar, then just keep on watching. So the bike behind me is a Giant ATX. It's kind of like a hybrid between Giant's lowest end mountain bike hardtail. I think that's called the Talon. It's a similar geometry and in my opinion it seems like a very similar bike. It was branded at one point as like their hybrid kind of mountain bike and more of a casual rider, but in my opinion, it's still a pretty solid hardtail mountain bike. It has a little bit more cross country style geometry and it's a little bit more dated. This, this bike in general, uh, I think started, or <laughs> this bike in particular started its lineage in about the, the early 2010s, if I'm not mistaken. And I'll put the, the correct dates there if I'm, if I'm wrong. I think that the one behind me is from like 2014 and it's in pretty rough shape. Um, I, I picked it up for about $80 and it was really a gamble. I've actually purchased a bike from this seller before and it was a cut in half Trek Madone and I was kind of upset about that. But um, so I, I took a gamble on this bike and I kind of knew what I was getting into whenever I, I purchased it. I wanted to get a project bike. I do flip and sell bikes, so uh, this one in particular probably isn't the best for a, a quick flip. It's, it's gonna take a lot of work and I'll tell you exactly what I'm doing to it throughout the, the project, but today I'm going to clean it up and get a better look at what I need to do with it and I'm going to share it with you. There's a few things that I usually do. I just clean up the bikes and throw some degreaser on them and figure out whether or not the paint is going to survive or not. And in this case, I don't think it is. I might have to repaint it, which isn't going to be fun. And that's usually the indication of if I'm going to make a quick buck on, on a bike or if I'm going to um, do a whole build project with it, which probably will be doing with this one. Let's get into it. I'll wash it down and talk a little bit about what I think about this bike at $80. While I was cleaning it off, I noticed that there was some really deep chips in the paint and a weird discoloration with it as well. And I was really hoping that it wasn't the clear coat going bad, which is usually indicated by some discoloration or weird patterns on the paint like I'm seeing on, on the bike right here. And um, well, I'm, I'm actually going to have to re-sand the whole bike and paint it because the, the clear coat is actually bad on it and that's not a big deal. I wanted to repaint it. The only thing that I was trying to um, accomplish with this bike is I had another seller line or another buyer lined up for a mountain bike and it was somebody who purchased one of my other mountain bikes. So I kind of wanted to see if I could get this one together before uh, this person actually is a traveling nurse. So my time restrictions are are pretty tight and I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this bike together for this person um, as it's actually just a, um, a referral she wants to sell it or she has somebody who wants to buy the bike that she knows and well if the paint was good on this bike I would have been able to to get it done but I really don't like selling bikes to to buyers who are very interested in mountain biking specifically I don't want to sell them something that's like not 
up to my my standards and for me I wouldn't want to purchase a bike if the paint was all trashed and you know it looked like it had been around the block in Daytona for a few years which this one actually definitely has um, like I said the the seller that I got it from was a shady character they lived in a, a trailer so it is what it is uh, I'm gonna have to do a lot of work to this bike uh, painting it primarily the clear coat is coming off um, and underneath the clear coat seems to be damaged even more like somebody had tried to remove the clear coat at one point and do something about scratches in the paint and that's kind of the worst thing you could do to a bike if you don't have uh, painting experience or any sort of polishing experience with bikes or vehicles. What's my plan for this bike you say? Well I'm gonna try to keep it at under $300 with my initial investment and that really puts me in a hard place for selling or reselling a bike because the market in my area is pretty high with uh, mountain bikes and there there's a lot of different prices and people don't really want to pay what a bike is actually worth and I know that it's if it's secondhand I'm gonna to try to get the lowest price I can get out of something. But with a bike like this that probably sold for, you know, four or five hundred dollars new, it's really hard to to get somebody to to be interested in, in a bike like this at its stock form. So what I'm gonna do is put a couple hundred dollars into it probably and repaint it, maybe put some new decals on it and really do something nice to it to gain more attention. I might go a different route and do something more aggressive and progressive and strip the paint on it and kind of make it a more uh, dirt jump style bike or you know a more trail oriented bike. I have another donor bike that I'm going to be using all the parts on for this bike and uh, the only thing that I might have to replace is the fork depending on how bad it is. But like I said, I want to try to keep it under, under like a $400 total price point invested into it. I have $80 invested in it right now and I actually have another $100 invested into the, the donor bike that I'm going to be using for this one. So that's, uh, you know, that's close to $200. And then once we get into the, the bottom bracket and the crank set and the, you know, the gears and everything, it really adds up quickly. So like I was saying before, having you know, $400 into a bike like this and only getting $400 out of a bike like this, then it's it's a gamble and if you're not savvy with, with bike mechanics or, you know, figuring out how to buy and sell things to hold equity, then it's really not, there's not really a, a point in doing it. Um, if you're just a hobbyist, I, I am probably the extreme end of a hobbyist, so I am okay with holding $400 in, in a project and then only gaining that, that uh, equity back out of it without any, you know, huge, huge gain on, on my initial investment. If I were to price this bike at $500 and I, I put $400 into it, I probably would still just get what I put into it out of it because once you get into that $500 price point, people really want um, maybe even a new bike, or they're not really looking at, at bikes like this on, on the, the secondhand market. But that's pretty much it for, for today. I just wanted to introduce the, the project build series. I'm going to be cleaning this up and I'll show you throughout the video what it looks like after I clean it up. It's already done right now. And then in the next part of the video, I'll probably break down the entire bike and try to get an idea of all the parts and work that I'm gonna have to put into it and maybe even sand it down and get it ready for a repaint or stripping the paint. So if you want to see more about this budget hardtail mountain bike build, then uh, just keep on watching my videos, maybe subscribe and hit the notification bell. Don't forget to go out there and create your own adventure however you can, spread some positivity. See you on the next one. Mahalo.